G'day guys, it's me Zinkberg and this is Fleabag the Dog. Welcome to the Craftworks SMP. We have a lot to get through today. We have a couple of time lapses. We have some new buildings, including a new shop in the shopping district. We have a Australian surf club that I have built. A complete redo of the shore out here at Zinc Point as I have named this area, and a bit of fun and games. Uh, hang around. Oh, there's a brand new intro. Get ready for this. Let's get started. Let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. Let's get straight into it. Let's have a look at what I've done. So first thing, we're going to hit a time lapse of the redo of the beach area. Have a look. All right, let's go and have a look at what we've done. So, uh, oh, well, first of all, we'll bring Fleabag with us. So we've gone with one of those walkways. You know those, uh, <laughs> you know those nature walks where you go and they've put all the pathing down and they've got you know railings on the side. How there's always useless signs, things there that tell you about things in the area and stuff like that. Well, I've thrown a couple of those in for good measure. Uh, let's just have a look it, again, as with all my builds. It's not finished yet. <laughs> but let's have a look and see. Oh, look, flea bags already going. We're, let's have a look and see what we got up to. So we start up here at the lighthouse. I have added in some extra pieces along here. I decided I don't like the iron fencing. Um, so I went with the trapdoors odor uh, kindly reminded me that you can put uh, redstone torches underneath these and have them sit in an upright position and there we have it so that's a much better handrail along the side here to the lighthouse uh, we have done some work down here so we did as you saw in the time lapse there um, we've 
completed the rockery around to the edge here and, and brought it around over this side as well, as well as doing all this beach area down here. And here we have our walkway. So we'll head down. I've gone a long way with it. I think I've got to do some texturing to it. It looks a little plain so far. I'm, I've got to get used to having Fleabag with me. I want him with me on all my trips and journeys. Yes, I do. Uh, but I'm always terrified with my dogs because they're special to me, because they're named and they're not just a, any dog. They're a special dog. I get worried when they wander off. I get worried when they attack things. I get worried when they hear that yelp when they get hurt. Anyway, so let's have a look around. So we come down here. Uh, we have the first of our signs over here. Uh, the Zinc Point Lighthouse was founded in 2023. So it's just, as I said, one of those useless signs. Down here we have a way down onto the beach. I always laugh at these ones. I don't know if you've got them wherever you are in, in the world, but things like caution, sand is hot. So I thought I'd add one over here, which is uh, caution, water is wet. Uh, we may get a couple more of those sorts of things. <laughs> Uh, anyway, back up here, so the pathway comes along. I, I sort of wanted it to be, you know, a little bit, sort of a little bushes and things around as well as that, as sort of the pathway. It's not just about the pathway. Uh, here's another sign. The town hall was started in 23 and remains unfinished. This is, <laughs> that's, that's as much a reminder for me that I really have to get in there and finish that. And I will, I will do that. I will do that. It's becoming like the tower in my single player world. Uh, down there you can see on the beach the volleyball net. Uh, that's that's good. Uh, I, I enjoyed doing that. I need to put down, I want to get a, um, a skeleton skull to put down there like a ball and I'll probably mark out the the area. Um, Oda pointed out that that could, that could be done and that would look really cool. Um, down here we have like a marshy area and another one of the signs now these are the ones i love the most right these are the ones about random wildlife that you read and you think well what's you know am i expecting to see that thing what's going on here's one coming up here and this is a true fact the lyrebird can mimic the sound of a chainsaw uh we don't have lyrebirds in Minecraft <laughs> and this is how I feel whenever I see one of these signs in real life I'm like so is the bird meant to be here somewhere like I want to where, <laughs> where's the glass to tap on to make the bird come out <laughs> anyway we have a little marsh area down here and a and a nice little just a basic pond this is you know one of those where the the beach sort of is going to link up at the right tide at high tide throwing in some rocks and things around the area just to to give it that sort of more more real sort of feel um to it I, I think it looks i think it looks pretty good there's a lot more to happen particularly over here um but anyway so we've got uh yeah the, the pathway comes up over here just all next to the beach um, very natural, very, very good sort of feel to it. And over here, this is my interpretation of a classic Australian surf lifesaving club. Um, I'll flash a picture up on the screen in a second and show you um, show you what a surf lifesaving club looks like in Australia. And there you go. So that one there is uh, Newport Surf Lifesaving Club in New South Wales, uh, down in Sydney. Um, so here I've just, I just wanted something that was sort of a, a, a cool little build to have something that I haven't seen done before in Minecraft, something totally unique. Um, the great thing about these surf lifesaving clubs is that they're, a lot of the work that's done in there is volunteer work. Um, these guys save lives, like they are legitimate lifesavers. I, I, I believe the top end guys are, are paid for what they do. Um, but a lot of what happens at the surf club stays at the surf club now if if you're a member of a surf club you'll know what i mean by that if you're not then i'm sorry to throw an inside joke at you like that um but one of the things that does happen is often particularly 
earlier on, particularly in the 70s and 80s and 90s, um, surf clubs were sort of kept uh, kept up, sort of the upkeep of them by volunteers and, and by people who were members of the surf club. So you ended up with these hodgepodge sort of... Um, fixes for things and stuff like that so you'd have a stairwell that doesn't match with posts that are a bit iffy and you know the club was always in a little bit of disrepair and there were always these sort of weird little things like like the the surf club would get updated and in in the 80s they'd add a new wing they'd add a new section outside or something and they'd try and keep it looking similar but it had never looked quite the same i loved this when i was building this because it gave me the freedom to um to build like i build a little bit messy <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was good to to have those things uh as far as uh, interiors go we haven't done a lot as far as the interiors go but I have done some bits and pieces um, so this is I'm cl I'm claiming this as main beach all of this along here this is main beach on the craftworks um, server and this is main beach surf lifesaving club SLSC um, so on the outside here we have little little seats that were always like benches and things like that um, <coughs> generally you see people sitting down putting their shoes on in these areas, <laughs> they finally managed to get the sand off their feet. Um, oh, the colouring for a surf club was always this sort of um, sandstone sort of look. It wasn't sandstone, it was concrete, and they painted it. Um, and they went with those sandy colours because, well, they're going to get covered in sand. So that's sort of the smart thing to do. Downstairs here, so this is actually the back door, right? The area that faces the beach. Um, oh, before we do so we have some some roller doors on the side here generally like they keep um their boats and their surf life saving equipment things like that in those areas um so you'd be able to just pull them up and pull out the boats and things oh i do have a boat that needs to go down one of those you know they've got the red inflatable boats and everywhere i i didn't have it down because fleabag keeps walking into it <laughs> and it annoys me because i've got to break the boat to get him out um, so yeah so roller doors here and here um and just some plants around and things to give it a little bit of color and inside here oh look i used the chocolate trap doors <laughs> in a tiny little piece up there <laughs> I'm, i told you i'm gonna find a way to use them there they are um, so inside, I haven't done anything here. This would be the main entrance area. Uh, you would come in from this side, and this side will have a car park and some other things. Um, so this would be the main entrance from the from the road side, um, and you would come in. And there's there's normally like a little area to sort of check in and things like that if you're a member of the club and things some of them are licensed so they serve alcohol and things um, in here this is one of the garages in in the garage of a surf club there are the most random things it, it, i don't know if they're still this way i'm sure they're more organized now than when when i went into some back when i was a lot younger um, but uh, there's always some you know some random tool chest with with a million rusty things in it there are you know spare doors hanging around on the on the side some very dangerous power tool on the oh no see why don't i take flea bag with me more often well <laughs> as i just said <laughs> let's oh sorry mate i'm sorry uh yeah and a you know a squid head on the side there Look, he's upset with me now. He's just going to sit in the corner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have any food to give you either. Uh, I don't think. I don't think you have golden. I don't think you take golden carrots. We'll find you something to eat. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, and and just a you know some random block of wood and some poles and things like that sitting around shelves over there on the side. So that's the idea behind um, behind this sort of thing. And I will put that red boat back once flea bag decides to leave the area um, over in this side here this will be another one so in here you know the spare flags uh, for the for the surf and you know, some poles and things like that just a little tiny room there if I shut that 
<laughs> now he's stuck in there. He won't be. He'll teleport to me and he'll get back in this boat again. So we'll put the red boat back again. Don't. Don't. Come on. Out. Hey. Out. All right. We'll go. I haven't put an, a way to get upstairs uh, from the inside. But that's okay. That's all right. We don't need that at the moment. Then upstairs was always a more sort of... Like I said before, they'd added this part uh, later on or something like that. We've got a little a little bar outside that you could stand on and have a drink um, and sort of look out to the ocean. There are also these little red alarms. So these are um, alarms that they would use for shark alarms. And, and of course, if there was anyone in trouble down there. Um, so in here we have a little bar here inside and a little makeshift dance floor that you, know, you can sort of you could bop away to you can have a bit of a dance in here um, <laughs> the dance floors were always too small to do anything but you could hire these halls out and and that was a lot of fun so we've got a little tabled area there's going to be a kitchen in here so this will be where some food can be prepared and things like that this is this is interesting i actually remember this from a surf club that was near where where i used to hang out a little bit and you would have these tiny little nooks and crannies outside i i don't remember them being for anything in particular other than if you were here at a dance or something you'd come out here and uh and everyone would be hanging out in some tiny little area way too small and doing things they shouldn't be doing um and inside so we've got yeah someone's left a stool out near the bar here somewhere you can sit that's obviously going to be really uncomfortable and and a drink with a dog in it that's probably that drink is probably hair of the dog <laughs> um just gone with some yeah some wood framing on the inside and then outside here we've got sort of a an outdoor drinking area where you can sit down and grab a drink and and have a, another bar out here um, someone stand behind here and serve you um, yeah so that's sort of the basics of, of what we've done here that's um, that's it as it stands I think I think as usual I think it looks pretty cool oh the flat oh we're out down here let's let's quickly go down I will oh I forgot to put my elytra back on that's good and have no armor on. get don't go Oh, don't go anywhere near it. So we have a couple of towels down on the beach here. And here we have the classic Australian red and yellow flags. So if you go to a beach in Australia and it's at a patrolled area, I would suggest only swimming at the patrolled areas. Um, if, unless you're a very confident swimmer and even then really think about what you're doing. Generally in Australia, what they have these red and yellow flags up. And basically they're saying that the area within these flags is safe to swim in and you're not going to you're not going to get in too much grief as well as anything else this is the area that they're really watching if you're in the water and a, a surf lifesaver blows a whistle or yells at you do what he says he's trying to save your life <laughs> So this ends the um, my my TED talk on how to how to act around the surf life saving club in Australia. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun to build and I I really enjoyed it. Just a little a little building. It needs some background stuff. We might do some giant sort of um, pine trees. They're often found around the beaches. They put them down to flea bag. Stop it. Um, they often put them around to, to sort of stabilise the ground where the sand meets the dirt and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's my Surf Life Saving Club. I hope you enjoyed the tour and learned a little bit along the way. Let's have a look at something I did in the end. And here we have the final product. Uh, <laughs> it was good fun moving the slime shop to the end. Unfortunately with the end, um, this is about as much of the shopping district as you're allowed to see right now because everywhere I face, there are spoilers. Um, so 
<laughs> I'm not allowed to uh, to look in just about any direction, which is very frustrating. <laughs> um, so we have, yeah, he's got his father's eyes, which is good. Um, and just the tongue rolled out there so that we can, uh, we can, people can enter the, oh, there we go. So people can enter the, uh, enter the shop. So you come in here and, uh, yeah, slime box, one, one diamond per stack. Um, so I'll look down and then I'll do that again. Oh, there we go. All right. Safe, safe. So that's the slime shop. And that's about all I've got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I was glad to see so many, so many of you enjoyed the uh, my top 10 builds of 2023. Uh, I really appreciate your support on that one there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I love all of you to death. You guys are the best. And, and if you like anything in this video, please leave me a comment. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to subscribe. We're going to have a lot more fun. And from me and from Fleabag, have a great week. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.